Good afternoon, friends and supporters. Uh, wonderful to see you here. I'm Stephen Orper. I'm Senior Vice President here at the Korea Society uh, for Policy Programs. And uh, we're delighted that you can join us. We'd also like to welcome those streaming online or listening via audio podcast or viewing by YouTube video. Uh, it is a privilege today to have up on the stage uh, one of America's foremost analysts in the former Scott Snyder. Uh, Scott is back with us. Uh, some of you remember uh, in May uh, that Scott uh, was here for the release of the Japan-South Korea identity clash. You may well know Scott uh, not only through his analyses, but through his blog, Asia Unbound, uh, to which he contributes for the Council on Foreign Relations, as well as Forbes magazine. Of course, his career is very long and distinguished. Uh, he's also worked with the Asia Foundation and the Asia Society. And so those of you from the Asia Society, welcome here today as well. And uh, to interview Scott, we have our president, Thomas Byrne. Uh, Tom worked with Moody's Investment before joining the Society in August. He, uh, prior to joining Moody's in 1996, was with IFI as a senior economist in Washington and is a graduate of Johns Hopkins SICE. So thank you for joining us today, and this should be a very informative, uh, events-driven uh, newsmaker session. We're <laughs> delighted you're with us. Please okay. come. Well, thanks for the introduction, uh, Steve. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for coming uh, today. I think we have a good turnout. Well, I'll just uh, jump right into the, in, into the issues here. Um, and the format will be I'll ask uh, Scott uh, a series of questions, and then Scott will answer the questions and elaborate on issues that I have raised. Uh, so the first one is regarding uh, the diplomatic objectives of President Park geun hes meeting with Xi Jinping in Beijing during China's uh, commemoration of the 70th year since the end of World War II. Um, what are South Korea's strategic objectives uh, in, uh, in President Park going to, to Beijing? Uh, and then uh, related to that, was there any collateral strains to the USROK uh, relations as the US did not participate in the ceremony in Beijing? Okay. Uh, well, as you know, there, uh, I think, was a lot of focus on the question of whether or not President Park was going to visit mm -hmm. uh, Beijing uh, back in August. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of speculation actually in the South Korean media about whether it would be something that the U.S. would support or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, it's pretty clear, uh, basically, um, with regard to Korea's relationship with China, I believe that the Park administration has been assiduous in um, uh, consulting uh, with the U.S. government uh, before and after almost every of the six meetings that... Uh, President Park has now had mm -hmm. uh, with President Xi. Uh, and so I think there was good uh, consultation uh, between the U.S. and South Korea. Um, but um, I, I think that the thing that happened during that period was that the tone of the U.S.-China relationship began to shift in a more mm -hmm. negative way. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the main uh, focus of um, uh, South Korean diplomacy towards China is really on uh, the question of unification and on getting Chinese support uh, for unification. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's been the longstanding objective from the beginning of uh, the normalization. Uh, it's actually what I think No mm -hmm. indicated that he uh, wanted uh, and that it was one of the purposes of normalizing the relationship mm -hmm. with China back in uh, the early 1990s. Uh, and so this, I think, was uh, a main focus of the conversation that um, uh, President Park and President Xi were able to have mm -hmm. uh, the day before the parade. Uh, so I think the issue that ended up being a little bit controversial was related to uh, participation in the parade and really the optics mm -hmm. uh, of uh, <clears throat> her participation. Uh, and that's really interesting, I mm -hmm. think, because... If you're not in the U.S. government and you're not following the situation very closely and you see uh, Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, and Park Geun-hye standing next to each other, you think, it looks like there's something wrong here. Um, it just doesn't look right uh, if you're an American. But if you're a Korean, when you look at that picture, you think, ah, it's not Kim. Park geun -hye is standing there. Uh, and so I think that it's just fascinating that um, 
there's the same picture but completely different interpretations mm -hmm. if you're an average American versus an average Korean. Right, okay, good. Um, well, that leads actually to my second question, although I, 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 I will get back to why wasn't uh, Kim Jong-un there. But um, uh, what is China's position regarding uh, unification? Uh, on one hand, it, it seems to be broadly the same. However, it could be the case of the, the Chinese saying, um, because China wants a, a stable uh, a Korean peninsula, I think China has also come out in favor of reunification, right, quite explicitly. Uh, but it could be a case of the Chinese saying, um, or is it the case, uh, uh, same bed but different dreams? Um, uh, is there a lot of overlap, or is this an area that really is to be determined on, on, on the strategic approaches uh, towards unification and what China would like to see, how, how China would like to see a unified Korean Peninsula versus how Seoul would like to see a, un a reunified Korean Peninsula? Yeah, I think it's true that um, China has formally stated um, uh, support for uh, Korean unification, but they also have certain expectations mm -hmm. and conditions for mm -hmm. uh, a type of unification mm -hmm. that would be acceptable from a Chinese perspective. Right. And I think that the core issue really is, um, first of all, um, <clears throat> China really appreciates the status quo uh, mm -hmm. because they fear instability mm -hmm. on the peninsula. So I would say the, the main priority for China is really uh, stability, probably over unification. Mm -hmm. uh, that was reflected, and I think in a very interesting way, uh, in the reporting from the Park Xi meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is that uh, President Park uh, was quoted as saying that uh, she hoped that Korea would, uh, Korean unification would be achieved as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, the formulation that was used in reporting uh, for President Xi was that he hoped for a quote-unquote autonomous and peaceful unification at some future date. So the gap is related to the time frame, and I think also possibly the, um, I, I think there's still an underlying gap related to end state. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really about the question of uh, a unification uh, led by Seoul and the question of whether or not uh, the alliance uh, would remain intact. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, I guess, uh, the, the clause um, that uh, all, all always comes up in informal uh, conversations with Chinese is they want to see mm -hmm. a Korean peninsula that's friendly to China. Mm -hmm. And I think the litmus test for that uh, may mm -hmm. be uh, the question of the durability of the alliance mm -hmm. in the context of a unification process. Right. Um, well, well, getting back to this um, uh, this insight that you had that from Seoul's perspective, it, uh, when they're looking at these three uh, world, uh, these three leaders on the podium, that the missing leader is Kim Jong Un. Um, wh what is uh, what is uh, Xi Jinping's uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, view of of, uh, of North Korea? I could say that uh, weaving in a little economics here, I can't resist. Um, I, I was at a uh, this informal seminar at the Peterson Institute of International Economics last night on North Korean trade through history, and something I found out I never knew was that uh, during the Brezhnev era, Brezhnev didn't like North Korea at the time, and so there was actually a deterioration in, in trade between the two countries. Uh, the Soviet Union was in effect punishing uh, Pyongyang, uh, North Korea. Uh, and we noticed there's also a drop-off in trade very recently between China and uh, and North Korea, and I wondered if it's the same phenomena related to the same phenomena. We didn't know; we couldn't conclude. But anyway, getting back to to uh, to, to the to the Beijing ceremony, um, you know, why wasn't Kim Jong Il, uh, Kim Jong Un, there? Well, I think we are in a, a bit of a cold period uh, mm -hmm. in the relationship mm -hmm. between Beijing and Pyongyang, and I think that uh, you know Xi Jinping really came to power at the same time that North Korea was undergoing one of their cycles. Mm -hmm. Uh, of testing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was greeted early on with a, a rocket test uh, and uh, a nuclear test. Mm -hmm. And so I think we saw from early 2013 uh, that the Chinese approach to North Korea drastically changed. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, during the 2009 to 2012 uh, time period, mm -hmm. I think that China was really trying to hug North Korea close. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, they, were, they, they shifted uh, and uh, really tried to mm -hmm. put um, Kim Jong-un kind of in the doghouse. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, we've seen that there's been no visit by mm -hmm. Kim Jong-un to Beijing. And uh, it appears that, um, interestingly enough, Xi Jinping has been very steadfast in insisting uh, that an improvement in the China-North Korea relationship, uh, and especially the symbolic reward of any mm -hmm. kind of summit meeting, you know, would be conditioned on um, DPRK willingness to move back toward denuclearization. Oh, interesting. Uh, and right. that has uh, not happened right. uh, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. It's part of the bedrock strategy uh, that the party has endorsed under Kim Jong-un of mm -hmm. simultaneous economic and nuclear development. Right. Right. So uh, I think that uh, in this case, Xi Jinping is actually doing exactly what uh, the U.S. and others would like mm -hmm. uh, to see. Uh, mm -hmm. He's actually shown a fair amount of cooperation uh, in insisting that denuclearization is a critical issue. Right, right. So China, in effect, is is has an active diplomacy vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. It's not just disinterestedly watching developments occur and is trying to influence uh, developments. Is that accurate? I, I, they've prioritized denuclearization, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, at the summit with uh, uh, President Obama mm -hmm. the other day. I think that uh, President Xi made clear mm -hmm. uh, his position on uh, North Korean um, uh, nuclear mm -hmm. program and and also uh, the uh, possibility of a rocket launch. Okay, okay, good, interesting. Well, perhaps when we have a Q&A, &A, and I think we have an extended period for Q&A, hopefully, if we finish soon, uh, that, that uh, we could further explore, you could further explore President Park's visit to Beijing. I wanted to turn to um, the other diplomatic initiative that uh, the South Korean government uh, has conducted recently, and that's um, President Park Geun Hye's um, a speech at the UN General Assembly um, earlier this week. Um, President Park's speech covered a wide range of issues, including the same al undong I was in Korea, actually, when that was very active, as a model for rural development for other countries in the world today, uh, and also uh, Seoul's hosting the Green uh, Climate Fund. Uh, but I would like to ask Scott to provide insights on two, I think, uh, other, perhaps more prominent or more fundamental uh, issues regarding uh, Seoul's regional diplomacy. Uh, one is on the President's Northeast Asia Peace and Cooperation Initiative. Uh, President Park noted in her speech in the UN that in Northeast Asia, we see a deepening of the Asia paradox phenomenon, where political and security cooperation lags behind the high degree of economic and independence among the countries in the region. So to get to my question, my question is, how can South Korea, perhaps along with China and Japan, create a virtuous cycle of trust building and increased cooperation? Uh, can we look for any progress in the year ahead? on this front? Well, I think that uh, this has been a very vexing issue for mm -hmm. the Park Geun-hye administration because I think President Park has identified the Northeast Asia Peace and Cooperation Initiative mm -hmm. as really the solution to the Asian mm -hmm. paradox that she raised. Uh, and I think the premise is that South Korea can uh, actively conduct the kind of diplomacy that will bring the region together. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's been very challenging because um, the premise underlying uh, pursuing that approach, um, you know, one has been uh, that it would be possible to move forward in inter-Korean relations. Secondly, uh, that Japan would take a correct view of history. Uh, and so the problems in the Japan-Korea relationship have mm -hmm. been a real sticking point that have made it very mm -hmm. difficult for um, the NAPSI process to really proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that we are on a good track because one of the things that uh, President Park was able to accomplish in Beijing was to get uh, a process known as the Trilateral Coordination mm -hmm. uh, Summit process back on track. And this is really mm -hmm. Japan, China, uh, South Korea uh, leader level meetings 
uh, it looks like uh, a trilateral leader level meeting will occur in um, maybe end of October or early November mm -hmm. uh, in Seoul. Uh, and alongside that, uh, it's possible that we might see mm -hmm. uh, a bilateral summit for the first right. time between right. Japan and South Korea. Right. And really, you know, in order for the, um, the regional initiative that Korea has been pushing for a long time, in order for that to work, Korea has to have working relationships with its neighbors. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it really cannot be uh, uh, work toward overcoming the conflicts that are endemic to this idea mm -hmm. of an Asian paradox. Right, right. Now, this uh, trilateral summit that's coming up in, in Seoul in October, perhaps, is this the first trilateral summit between uh, leaders of those three countries? No, it would not be the first trilateral mm -hmm. summit. Essentially, uh, these uh, summits were occurring uh, back really from, I think, about in 2009. Uh, mm -hmm. They became a regular feature. So uh, I think Im Young Bak participated in right. several okay. of these. Uh, but it was really interrupted by Prime Minister Abe's ascension to office and the focus on the history issue. Right. Right. Uh, and so since uh, mm -hmm. early 2013, that process has been I suspended. Think. Okay, good. Um, my, uh, my second question about President Park's um, uh, speech here at the United Nations is that uh, against the background of the, the, the agreement that was reached in Panmunjom, uh, I think at the end of August, uh, after the, uh, uh, the incident where two South Korean soldiers were, were maimed by a, a mine that the North Koreans had planted. Um, well, anyway, President Park noted that the two Koreas are in her words, standing at a junction, pointing to a cycle of trust and cooperation. However, she also stated that her government's position is that, uh, again, this is a direct quote, we must no longer use political and military reasons as excuses for turning a blind eye to humanitarian issues, end of quote. And she noted approvingly, at least I take it to be approvingly, that the UN's Commission of Inquiry uh, reported on human rights abuses in North Korea. So the question is, um, how will this mixing of, of human rights and, and politics um, affect the dialogue between Seoul and, and Pyongyang? And also, uh, would this affect President Park's effort to have Beijing play an active and constructive role in denuclearization and unification uh, diplomacy? So. I think the DPRK has already issued a kind of response mm -hmm. to President Park's speech, uh, either yesterday or today, uh, in which they criticized her speech. Uh, and the basis of the criticism was that she was trying to build, essentially build international pressure uh, on North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the two things that the North Koreans have always been objecting to are uh, international pressure and also, um, uh, as we saw in August, the focus on propaganda mm -hmm. uh, initiatives against North Korea. Uh, and essentially they threatened to cut short the family reunion process right. uh, as right. part of that. Right. So I think the North Koreans have mm -hmm. indicated clearly that um, they feel that those sorts of statements, mm -hmm. um, that, well, they're, they're dissatisfied with them and it could put future progress uh, at risk mm -hmm. is essentially what they're projecting. Um, and I, it's hard to answer the question about um, how it might affect relations with Beijing uh, because um, Beijing also was implicated in the Commission of Inquiry report. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from that perspective, I think China is likely to be less sympathetic mm -hmm. uh, to certainly the Commission of Inquiry right. and the focus on human rights. Uh, but on the other hand, we saw that uh, President Xi made a, a pretty robust public statement mm -hmm. um, uh, endorsing uh, the idea that any mm -hmm. launch by North Korea of a rocket mm -hmm. should uh, be subject to the existing UN Security Council resolutions. In mm -hmm. other words, don't do it. Right, right, right. <clears throat> okay. Um, my... Um, and uh, my, my final question uh, before we go to Q&A is, um, in October, there'll be a summit between uh, President Park and, and President Obama in, in Washington, D.C. Um, now, the Korea Society actually will be having an assessment of what the summit 
produced, we have former um, uh, Ambassador to Seoul, uh, Kathy Stevens, coming here um, after the summit and, and speaking at the Korea Society. But as, as a preview, uh, what do you see the, are, the, are the main issues that will be discussed, and can we anticipate any, any outcome in terms of new policy initiatives or new agreements? So I think there are three main areas mm -hmm. uh, that are likely to be addressed uh, mm -hmm. as part of the summit meeting between President Obama and President Park. Uh, the first issue, set of issues that uh, both sides have signaled uh, are being called, quote unquote, new frontier issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the main three um, really functional areas of cooperation that they're trying to build into the alliance relationship right now uh, focus on space cooperation, cybersecurity, mm -hmm. uh, and global health. Uh, and really, I think that what this is about is uh, the U.S. trying to encourage uh, and support South Korea's efforts to step up and make mm -hmm. contributions uh, in the international community. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, President Park's UNGA speech had a long list of accomplishments where South Korea has been engaged right. in that. Mm -hmm. uh, so those issues are going to be dealt with. Uh, they are a priority of the governments, but they're not sexy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're going to get that much attention. Mm -hmm. um, the second area is actually related to this question that we've been talking about. Where does South Korea fit between China and Japan? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that uh, this is an opportunity for the leaders to compare notes, basically, mm -hmm. on how the situation is going in Northeast Asia. Right. Uh, and then the third area, uh, as always, uh, is coordination on North Korea. Uh, and if North Korea does something between now and the summit uh, to draw attention, like mm -hmm. a nuclear test or a, a rocket launch, then mm -hmm. I think that we'll see that become the main issue that will mm -hmm. dominate the conversation. Uh, right. And uh, if something like that happens, then uh, probably the officials in both, both governments are going to be uh, right. um, very proud of their prescience in scheduling the summit right at this moment. Right, right, okay. I, I just a thought came to my mind. Um, of course, South, uh, North Korea has been sanctioned for um, nuclear tests and long-range ballistic missile tests. Uh, would there likely be another sanction coming out of the UN if North Korea goes ahead with a ballistic missile test? Yeah, I think it's pretty uh, clear that, uh, so last week uh, uh, we had in Seoul uh, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary Sung Kim mm -hmm. uh, talking with his counterparts, mm -hmm. uh, and there's been a lot of exchanges going on uh, with the main members of the six-party right. process. Uh, really focusing on what can be done right. if North Korea does something like this. And I think that the default option would be to try to strengthen sanctions. Mm -hmm. So I could imagine that this um, uh, there could be additional UN um, mm -hmm. sanctions designations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also possible that the U.S. might uh, uh, do some further sanctions designations under uh, bilaterally. Mm -hmm. Uh, under the executive order that was right. established back right. in January following the Sony right. hack. Right. Uh, and actually, I think an interesting area to watch also is, um, you know, as the U.S. government grapples with how to respond on cybersecurity issues related to China, I think North Korea also uh, can be enfolded into that as a potential target. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it'll be interesting to see whether mm -hmm. there are some collateral impacts on mm -hmm how we address those issues with North Korea as part of the debate about uh, right. how to deal with China. Right, right. And um, uh, just a, a last follow-up question to this issue of UN sanctions. Um, I, I would think we could expect uh, uh, China's um, full support, maybe too strong, but, but, but support to uh, further sanctions against North Korea, given the, the strains and the dissatisfaction that President Xi Jinping has shown towards uh, towards the North Korean leadership, the new North Korean leadership? So based on what President Xi has said, um, I think that it's likely that China would support some step toward increasing sanctions. Right. Uh, the critical issue for China will be to um, ensure that sanctions don't sacrifice stability. Right. 
So I do think there is a limit for China mm-hmm. as it considers mm-hmm. um, the um, potential application of, of right. sanctions and the type of sanctions right. that they might be willing to support. Okay, good. Um, well, thank you all for coming, and, and thank you for the for the members. And I hope uh, those of you who are not members uh, would consider membership, and you could approach uh, Nikki for that. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you.